We welcome all to this Palm Sunday worship service, those who are here in the sanctuary, those who are looking in at home. Um, I do see a few um, new unfamiliar masks out there, so welcome to you if you haven't been in worship. Uh, God is good and we are here to receive his good gifts. A couple of announcements before we begin. You may have noticed that we are no longer going to be using the little uh, colored pieces of paper. We're going to be going back to the few pads, the sign-ins that should be in the pews that you have there. So please utilize those to register your attendance with us today. And also take note of our upcoming Holy Week services. Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday, two services at 11 and 6.30. No Saturday service, but Easter Sunday, three services at 7, 9.30 over in the gym, and then here at 11 o'clock in the sanctuary. Now uh, that's all the announcements we have for this morning, so I imagine it's time to please stand for the singing of our opening. <laughs> Thank you. 
Testament reading for Palm Sunday is from Zechariah chapter 9. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you, righteous, and having salvation is he, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall speak peace to the nations. His rule shall be from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today I declare that I will restore to you the double. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the epistle is from Philippians chapter 2. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. And being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
crowd that stood there and heard it said that it thundered. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, the voice has come for your sake, not mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now will the ruler of this world be cast out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to show by what kind of death he was going to die. So the crowd answered him, We have heard from the law that the Christ remains forever. How can you say that the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is this Son of Man? So Jesus said to them, The light is among you for a little while longer. Walk while you have the light, lest darkness overtake you. The one who walks in the darkness does not know where he is going. While you have the light, believe in the light, that you may become sons of the light. When Jesus had said these things, he departed and hid himself from them. Though he had done so many signs before them, they still did not believe in him, so that the word spoken by the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. Lord, who has believed what he heard from us, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? Therefore they could not believe. For again Isaiah said, He has blinded their eyes and hardened their heart, lest they see with their eyes and understand with their heart, and turn and I would heal them. Isaiah said these things because he saw his glory and spoke of him. Nevertheless, many even of the authorities believed in him, but for fear of the Pharisees, they did not confess it, so that they would not be put out of the synagogue, for they loved the glory that comes from man more than the glory that comes from God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ.
the outset, it might seem strange that a message for Palm Sunday doesn't come primarily from the familiar, from Zechariah 9 or maybe Mark 10. It's coming this morning to us from the Epistle lesson, second chapter of Philippians. It seems a little strange, but don't get the wrong idea from the outset. Even though we're looking initially at the Epistle lesson, this Palm Sunday, we're not going to ignore the, the grandeur of the palms and the praises and the quotes that are spread and the greeting of Jesus into Jerusalem on his final days on earth. We're not going to ignore the prophecy of Zechariah who told us that this one who rides in in majesty is the one who is righteous and who is bringing salvation. No, far from ignoring them, we're actually trusting the entirety of the narrative of from God's Word. Because think of it this way, Paul could never have written about every knee bowing, every tongue confessing the Lordship of Jesus had not the prophets, like Zechariah, predicted it, and had not Jesus himself fulfilled it. So there's an appropriateness to focusing on what Paul tells the church about this lordship of Jesus and what it took for that lordship to be established eternally. So we begin with the words of Paul in our text who said, Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus. It is from that point in, in verse 5 that the Apostle Paul sets before us, first and foremost, what was the mind of Christ. Have this mind among yourselves that was from Christ. Well, what was the mindset of Christ? It was a mind that was focused on humbling himself. He is God in human flesh. And he sets his mind on humility. He sets his mind on obedience to the Father. He takes that lowest of positions. He wasn't simply a mere mortal man. He was a mere mortal man who took on the form of servant. We know, as Scripture said, that Jesus came not to be served but to serve and to give his life as a ransom. He, in obedience, becomes the servant of all. And he makes up his mind, so to speak, his mind that will take him to the cross. And that all takes place. Why? Because long before the scene of Palm Sunday takes place, long before it was ever in that human mind of Jesus, it was in the plan, in the heart of God the Father. God the Father, from the time of the Garden of Eden, when Adam and Eve fell into sin, God set in place that we would be rescued from sin, death, and the devil, doing so by the humiliation, suffering, and death of the Son of God. So today, yes, wonderful day of celebration, Palm Sunday, and yet, even as Jesus rode into Jerusalem on the back of a donkey, as the palms were waving, the cloaks were spread, shouts of Hosanna to the Son of David echoing in the hills, Jesus had it in his mind that all things necessary for our salvation would occur just as the Father had in his mind, in, in his heart. God is set. I'm reminded of that great old hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness, where it says, There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not. Thy compassions fail not. 
As thou hast been, thou forever shalt be. God forever shall be that one who is calling us and drawing us through his Son. Oh, that we would have that mind of Jesus. Walking in humility. Walking in loving obedience. Seeking that joy that comes from knowing what has been done for us. That joy that comes from knowing we can serve in love. So is our mind made up about that very thing? Because we have options. In our world, if nothing else, we have options galore. It's kind of fun to tell young people that at one time there were only three channels for which to choose. Except in Detroit, we had the channel out of Canada. So we had four. We have options. I'll confess to you this morning, I was not going to get the COVID shot, even though it was off. And it was a selfish reason that I did do it. Because without the shot, I can't go on a trip to Canada for fishing. <laughs> but you see, sometimes our minds are made up for us. But I can't help but think about that shot, especially the second. The one that prevents me from doing a full benediction at the end of this service. <laughs> the one that I got on Friday that made me feel so lousy on Saturday. But what an illustration. That which is intended for my good caused me temporary discomfort. That's a parallel to God's law. His law stings for a minute. It convicts us of sin. But the intended purpose of that shot of the law is to sting for a moment but to turn us back to God. To realize what that sting of sin is. And the sting of sin is the law. Paul says that in 1 Corinthians. The sting of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. That which is intended for our good hurts. Temporarily. We need to be reminded every day, not simply when we come to church, that we are the forgiven children of God. Those who have been convicted of sin but washed clean. Washed in baptism. Having our minds set right. Knowing that in love God has poured His grace upon us and we are His beloved children by God's grace we have been saved. Even though this world gives us those increasing numbers of options, options to turn away from God, by the power of God's Holy Spirit, we do not turn aside from following our Savior. Yes, there are times when we turn and we veer off, but that again, God's Word comes to us and pulls us back, puts us back on that path to settle our mind once again to those things that we love. We love hearing about God's forgiveness. We love hearing about God's Son coming to save us. We love coming for worship. We love receiving Holy Communion. We love worshiping together in this beautiful sanctuary. And we love that passage from Philippians. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus. He became a servant. And we're always tempted to jump ahead to the, to the end, that good part where every knee bows, every tongue confesses. <coughs> But we can't jump to that happy ending just yet. Because the reality of who we are and where we are invades our lives 
occasional occasion. But that's what this season of Lent is about. It's that season of repentance. It's that season of recognizing why Christ came. In every season of Lent, it's the same theme. Follow Jesus. Follow him where? To the cross. Follow him wherever he goes. So let's consider as we conclude, consider following Jesus during this holy week. Can we follow him today? Will you be there with the pageantry and the palms? Well, yeah, of course. We love it. We love a parade. We'll be there. The next day, Jesus goes to the temple, overturns the money changers' tables. Can we follow him there? Yeah. We'll be there because we say things like, that's great, Jesus. Go get him. Sick him. Later that week, Jesus does something strange. He curses a fig tree that won't produce fruit. Would we be there? Can we follow him there? If he's going to do cool stuff like that, yeah. Thursday, Maundy Thursday, he will institute the Lord's Supper. Can we follow him there? Yes. Joyfully, gladly partaking this very day of what he instituted that day. Then comes Friday. And the idea of being a servant is about to take a turn that will make too many people turn and no longer follow. Because we follow him to Good Friday and we follow him to the torturous hours. Betrayed, arrested, put on trial, whipped, beaten, spit upon, mocked, and crucified. And there's part of us that doesn't want to be there. But we're there. We're there because we were on the mind and in the heart of the one who is lifted up for us and for our salvation. We follow Jesus to the cross where he humbles himself, taking on human flesh and taking on human sin. So we make that full circle, ending with the words that began as Paul saying to the church, have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus. Hear that again. Have the mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus. We follow him to the cross, and daily we follow him with the cross. To him be the glory. Amen. Please stand. And the peace of God that passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds, through faith in Christ Jesus, to life everlasting. Amen. Together now we confess, I believe in one God, the Father of Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten and not made, being of one substance. Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who is spoke by the prophets. And I believe one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray now for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus.
Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We praise you, Father, that you have sent your Son, not in wrath, but in mercy. As we enter this most holy week and ponder together the mysteries of your great salvation, show to us the answer to your people's prayers at Hosanna in that passion, death, and resurrection of your Son, our Savior. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Uphold this world in your order. Preserve the church and the preaching of your word. Bless our homes, that parents and children may serve one another faithfully and grow in instruction and faith until life's end. Give help and wisdom to all who serve in public office, that their authority may be exercised for the benefit of all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we bring before you, Heavenly Father, the sick, the distressed, the needy. Give your abiding comfort in every circumstance, that in Christ we know that we shall not die but live, to declare his works now and for all eternity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And look with favor on all who approach your table this day. Grant that they would come with repentance and in faith to receive your Son's true body and blood for the forgiveness of sin. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we here remember the sufferings and death of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, for our salvation. Praising his victorious resurrection from the dead, we draw strength from his ascension before you, where he ever stands for us as our own high priest. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us, for to you alone we give all glory, honor, and worship, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, it is our intention to receive the Holy Supper of our Lord Jesus Christ in which he strengthens our faith by giving us his body to eat and his blood to drink. Believing this, let us confess our sins to God, imploring him for the sake of his Son, Jesus Christ, to grant us forgiveness. Almighty God, merciful Father, confess unto you our sins, The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you have created, and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy. We receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. By his triumphant entry into Jerusalem, we reach the goal of his substitutionary death. That by the offering of his own body and blood on the cross, all who believe in him may share his triumph over sin and death. We give you thanks for the redemption you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruits of his cross, 
and receive the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in his body and blood. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. And in the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sin. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you.
Body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you steadfast in the true faith the life everlasting. Depart in God's peace. Amen. Amen. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, for the gift of forgiveness won by your Son's offering on the cross, and for the strengthening of our souls and bodies by his body and blood. Go with us now and keep us steadfast in your word through the blessed days of this great and holy week and to our eternal life with him, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace.